The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Hi, this is David Arendelle. Welcome to another episode of PAL Groups, the podcast that is an interview series with students who serve as study group leaders. This time, we're going to be listening to a conversation with Rhonda here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. She serves in a college algebra course, and she'll talk about some of the different activities that she uses. And one of the issues I think is interesting she talks about is when she uses competition in the class and when she doesn't, and how that drives which particular activities that she selects. Then. And then she concludes her comments with us by sharing what is she personally and professionally learning from her experience as a study group leader. So let's go ahead and listen to the conversation with Rhonda. Well, hi, this is David. We're back with another one of our PAL facilitators here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. So won't we go ahead and hear from her? So Rhonda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, my name is Rhonda Yonker. I'm a third year junior studying biomedical engineering at the U of M, and I'm originally from White Bear Lake, Minnesota. What class are you serving as facilitator in? I am facilitating college algebra, which is a class for freshmen, first years usually, but there's students of all different ages, and it's the basic course goal is to fulfill the math requirement for LibEd. Well, what is it about a algebra course that makes it challenging? Because across the United States, the number one class that peer learning groups like this are offered in connection with are college algebra courses. What is it from your perspective that makes them challenging for many students? Some of the students, a lot of them actually that I've talked to, aren't pursuing math-related majors, so math isn't their strongest subject. So it's kind of hard. The students that are better at math, our course goes too slow for them, and for other students, the course is going too fast, so it's kind of hard to find a balance. Let's go ahead and move into our next question, which is getting to what are some of the favorite activities that you like to do during your sessions that you think have really been really effective with helping students? A lot of my students don't really like the competition thing. They like that is associated with games. So I've been using worksheets to as a way for them to kind of be able to use each other as resources rather than t- trying to compete with each other. And I think that that helps a lot. And another thing, when it gets closer to exam time, they kind of need a little competition to see where the other students are in the class to give them that drive to study harder. So I put together a Jeopardy game using a PowerPoint and I just put together three or four problems from each chapter that's going to be covered on the test. Split the class into groups and have them work on problems on the board, basically. Now, tell me a little bit of where that comes from. Where did you get the Jeopardy game from? Did you get it off the internet or something totally you created? I got the idea from other PAL facilitators that have used it and seen it as a really good way to get the students to learn, and it's a fun way for them to learn. Um, I actually put together the problems and put the board together on the PowerPoint myself, though. So what you end up seeing on the screen is what? you end up seeing the answer or do you see the problem? On the screen, there will be a bunch of different questions that each group gets to choose from. So they choose the question, the question will pop up. And then once they've had a chance to answer, I can click the mouse and the answer will pop up and show them whether or not they have it correct. Oh, very good. Well, it seems like we ought to get a game show for you out of this somewhere. (laughs) Is there anything else in particular that you do inside of your sessions that have been really effective then? One thing that I've really seen that helps a lot is I've been trying to get the students to use their book more as a reference rather than asking me for questions. So I'll write down the page numbers and as a little reference for me. And when they ask questions that have to do with stuff from the book, I can direct them to that. And then that way, I think that when they're studying on their own, they can reference the book rather than freaking out and not knowing what to do. Okay, when we just do one little follow-up question with that. Why is it that they have difficulty with math textbooks? Probably because the vocabulary is a little different. It's something that they have to pick up on, and sometimes something might be phrased differently in the question than it is in the book, and it's kind of hard to put it together and figure out that it's talking about the same thing. Well, let's move into our final question, and that is, what is it that you think that you're getting out of this personally and professionally? I've become a lot more confident when speaking in front of groups and helping people out. Like, I used to be a little bit timid when I'd have to help people out, and I wasn't really sure of it, and I've gotten a lot better about that, and I've also become better at explaining things. At the start, it was kind of hard trying to explain things that I I already understood very well and other students didn't understand. I've learned to break down things to make it easier to help them understand better, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And also, I've been able to kind of see how different groups of people work and tailor my sessions to help them like individually rather than just doing something that I feel would work for more students. Oh, that sounds like a lot. And just remind us once again, what do you think your future career will be? Um, Biomedical engineering. Excellent. And how do you think some of these skills will tie into that future? 
your career. For me as a naive person, it sounds like something where you walk into a laboratory and you have a whole bunch of test tubes and such, and you're kind of doing a lot of individual work. How do you see your career playing out? I'm just curious about some of these skills you're developing here. Um, well, a lot of times, actually, you'd work on a group. I, I'm interested in research and product development, so I'd be working with a group, and I think this is going to help me to be able to work with different groups of people and also to explain things better to them and teach other people what I know. Well, thank you very much, Rhonda. Thanks for coming in then. Thank you. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. More information about PAL is available at the website palgroups.org, P-A-L-G-R-O-U-P-S dot O-R-G. Join us next time for another interview about peer-assisted learning. Until then, take good care and good listening.